Welcome back to my block, Jags. I am Denaro Scurry, and I'm back with a video. I know it's been a while, and uh, reasoning, Jaguars just they just suck, man. I mean, I think the last video I made was probably week 12, week 13, and my schedule got busy, work, holidays, everything got super busy for me, and I could have squeezed in time to make videos, but also we didn't play well, and I just wasn't motivated to make any videos, honestly. Just being 100% honest. Just wasn't motivated to make any videos. Um, if you watch the games on Sunday, man, we look worse. Every game, we look worse, worse, worse. We're getting worse, and um, I just wasn't into it. I just literally, all my whatever, all my efforts, all my enthusiastic that I, enthusiasm that I had to make to make these videos and um, talk about the Jaguars went completely out the window, man. Completely out the window. And we just, might, mainly because we suck. Point blank period, we suck, man. Uh, Jacksonville Jaguars played the New England Patriots yesterday, and nobody in their right mind thought the Jaguars was going to win. Like, yeah, I'm not even upset that we I'm upset that we lost, but too much emotions ain't really ca caught up in that game because I knew we were going to lose. But who would have thought they would have dropped the 50-piece on us? You know what I'm saying? Who would have ever thought they dropped the 50-piece on us? And um, in the last few games, it seems like the defense was the only bright side on our team. And the last few games seem like the defense is starting to not really care as much. Um, and I, I don't blame them. The offense isn't giving them absolutely no help. Defense is going out there doing what they can, and the offense seems like they just can care less as far as from offensive line blocking has gotten worse. Uh, I think probably like the first like seven, eight games in the season, our offensive line was actually blocking pretty well. It was blocking pretty well, and then something happened. Shit started going downhill. I don't know if it was COVID. I don't know what it was, but – should start going downhill. Then um, the receivers, they don't want to catch the ball. You have Urban not playing James Robinson. Um, tight end play, we're getting inconsistent play from the tight end, even though we just traded for one. He came in, started catching, then kind of whatever happened, kind of fell off. So offense, kind of everything on offense just fell off. And then Trevor, Trevor's not playing as well as he was in the first half of the season compared to the second half. Shit. Even talking about it, got my eye watering, man. That's how emotional I am about the Jaguars. But, um, yeah, so the first half of the season compared to the second half of the season, as far as the offense, everything just seems like it's getting worse. And as a defense, I can understand how they're just tired, man. They're just 100% tired. So towards the end of the season, they're taking plays off. They're not really caring. I mean, when we played the Jets, when – um, what's the quarterback? Um uh, Whatever the quarterback is, number two, when he uh, took off on that run and you had, uh, what's his name, Fudge? Whoever number five, I can't think of his name right now. Ford. You had Ford who just didn't push him out of bounds, just let him run right past him and just score. I mean, zero effort. You had um, Winger just getting just getting juked, just getting juked. He's falling all over the play. It's like the effort of the team, of the defense, it's just like everything just went downhill. Can't really understand why um, we fired Urban, and that was the best thing for the team, honestly, because everything Urban did, literally everything Urban did, um, none of it was good. I mean, all of it backfired from the draft picks, draft, you know what I'm saying, the draft picks that him and Balky had to um, signing Tebow to the strength and conditioning coach to, I mean, just everything he's done, him – Stem staying, you I mean you find out he stayed back in Ohio after we played the Bengals. To I mean like him coming out that he's he's calling the coaching staff losers. To him benching Robinson for for no reason, and then the final straw when he kicked um, he kicked Josh Lambeau and Lambeau uh, put it out there. So the whole Urban deal was just was just a disaster. It was a circus. Um, I never was a fan of him. But you see where that, you know what I'm saying? That bullshit happened. Then we, now we don't have Urban. The city somewhat is excited, but the team doesn't play better. Now we got um, Bevel being the offense, uh, the offense coordinator is now being the interim head coach. Um, him being the interim head coach for the first few games, the um, play calling did get a little better. It did get a little better, not much, but it get, it got a little better. And, um, but we still look like shit. Trevor's throwing interceptions. Um, also, what's not helping is the receivers dropping the ball. Like, I've never seen so many drops 
in my life as for a team. Never in my life. And when you look at the – honestly, you, if you look at the numbers, you'll feel like the numbers is wrong because I feel like we should be number one in the, in the NFL is drops for drops. But it says we're like the third or fourth or something from the bottom. But I feel like we should be number one in drops because every game, I can guarantee a Chenault drop pass. I can guarantee a drop pass from the tight end. I can guarantee a drop pass from the run of the running backs. And I can guarantee um, Marvin Jones is going to drop a ball. Those are guaranteed. Those four are guaranteed every single game. Somebody's gonna. Those they're gonna drop the ball, and every single. And I don't know how many drop passes became interceptions. So it's like the receiving core, tight ends, running back. Nobody seems like they want to catch the ball. Running backs. We're playing from behind, so of course we're throwing the ball. So you have James Robinson not really getting as many to after. Urban got fired. James Robinson not getting as many touches. Granted, the game after Urban got fired, James Robinson got forgot how many touches he ran the ball for like eighty something yards, scored a touchdown. Um, but we still end up losing. And just being, just having logic and common sense. If you're playing from behind, you got to throw the ball. Got to hurt and try to score. You're playing from behind, you're throwing the ball. So running backs, we, our running game kind of went out the window. I mean, then from when we had Urban, you're playing. Carlos Hyde, why are you playing Carlos Hyde? Made absolutely no sense to be running Carlos Hyde when we have James Robinson on the team. I mean, everything, none of this shit just makes sense, man. It's a big ass circus. Um, and then it's when I, uh, back back on offense, like no, nothing seems to gel. Receivers running the wrong routes, Trevor throwing bad passes, drop balls, offensive linemen not blocking, offensive linemen can care less about blocking. Tight ends not doing much, man. Play calling is bad. Granted, play calling did get better, but it, we still had bad play calling. So it's man, it's just all over the place, man. All over the place. Now all that's going on, and I didn't want to make no videos, man. I did not want to make no videos because it was just, it's just pitiful, man. The the play, the product they putting on the field is just so bad, man. I did not want to make any videos. I didn't even want to talk about it. I was so upset. So I was just like, man, fuck it. I'm not gonna make a video. Um, but after, I mean, well, we got one week left, played New England. I was like, shit, let me make a video. I haven't, I haven't said nothing in a while. Um, I think last week, I think it was last week, uh, Shah Khan said that we're retaining Trent, Trent Balky as the GM. And the fan base and myself, crazy upset, highly upset. Trent Balky, since he's been here, we only won three games. He wasn't the GM last year, but he was like the assistant GM or something like that with Dave Caldwell. So he, he was like head of scouting or something like that. So he had a hand in the draft picks. He had a hand in free agency. And we fired Caldwell, made him GM. We he Him and Urban do the draft this year. The draft is horrible. We have three players, and out, all the, out of the draft picks, we have three players that actually play, actually touch the field. Um had Cisco just sitting there, don't know why. Cisco was getting touches in preseason. It was like they're barely, they're they're gonna bring him in little by little because he had the ACL. But then when the regular season comes, you don't play him. And there's no way that you can convince me Wingard is better. So Cisco doesn't play. We got defensive end from UAB. He doesn't play. Got Walker Little. The only reason he got the start was because Cam pulled the back muscle and pregame and pregame warmups. But he wasn't playing. Um, I think we got a defensive tackle. He wasn't playing. We got ETN who got hurt. Only once who was really touching the field and getting snaps was, of course, Trevor and then Tyson Campbell. Tyson Campbell, I'm sorry, I think I said Campbell earlier. I meant Cisco. If I, Cisco, the safety, should have been playing that. But anyway, Tyson Campbell was the only, those are two of the only people that were getting that were getting uh, snaps. Campbell, when he first, first early, in the, early in the year, he was getting beat, could not find the ball in the air. And we're looking like, Jesus, this was a bad pick. And they kept playing him, kept playing him, kept playing him. And he would lose the ball in the air. He would get caught on deep. Every time it seemed like they were picking on Campbell. And slowly he's starting to pick up. He's starting to play better. I mean, if you watch him play, I mean, he's making defensive defensive plays, tackles, all that good stuff. Um, but when it comes to the rest of the drafts, draft board, none of them are the draft, drafted players. None of them look good. Walk a little when he does play. He doesn't look good. Granted, you got Jawan Taylor on the right side. I honestly would rather see Walker Little than Jawan Taylor because we know what we have in Jawan Taylor. Point blank period, we know we have Jawan Taylor. We really don't know what we have in Walker Little. They drafted him to play 
I don't know, left or right tackle, but he's a tackle. Draft him to play one of them. Put him on the right side. Why are you still playing Juwan Taylor when you know Juwan Taylor's not good? Uh, ben Barch, we drafted him last year. He looks horrible. He gets ran through every time. He gets pushed back. So, you got, I mean, the offensive line, Norwell gets pushed back. Ken Robinson, he has his slip-ups. He's probably our best offensive lineman, but he has his slip-ups. Um, Linder constantly gets hurt. You got Shatley, who plays, I think, I don't know what Shatley, I think Shatley plays center guard. He ain't no better, honestly. He's whatever he is. So, I mean, our whole offensive line from, we got one decent offensive lineman, and everybody else is trash. And I'm saying trash because they are they are trash, point blank, period. Um, but anyway, Trent Baalke, he's he assembled all this with the draft picks, all that good stuff. And Khan had put out a put out a statement saying he's gonna bring him back. And he's gonna him and Balky or him yeah, him and Balky are gonna be part of the um are gonna be part of the head coaching interviewing process. And that just threw the fan base up. Like, why would you do this? Why would you continue with Trent Baalke when he was a part of the team last year? He's a part of this year that made the team that where the team is worse this year than it was last year. Why would you bring the same man back to BGM? So the fan base is like up, like up in arms. And I'm not, I'm one of them and I don't get it. I honestly think Shaq Khan doesn't care. I think Shaq Khan is one of these absentee owners because buying a team was a business move. We look at what he's, what all he's, um, what all he's um, acquired since he's gotten the Jaguars, since he became the owner of the Jaguars, got the soccer team, got AEW. He put in all his investments, trying to do all these investments downtown with the Four Seasons. He cares so much about this goddamn hotel with his Four Seasons, but he's they they approved that, so he has this whole downtown development thing. He has a no, another yacht being built, so he has all these other business ventures that. He's he's gotten that springboarded off only the Jacksonville Jaguars. The value of the Jacksonville Jaguars um, has gone up. He bought the team for seven hundred million dollars. I think last I seen it said it was worth one point four billion. So the value of the team doubled since he's bought the team. So I only think he cares about the team as far as a business move. It's a positive business. It's a positive uh, gain as far as money and worth and business. But as far as the product being good, that business itself being good. He can care less. He can care less how the team um, how the team plays, and I feel like he's gonna keep Balky there because if you keep Balky there, he doesn't have to do any work trying to hire anybody. But I'm just gonna keep Balky in this position, and he can hire the head coach. I'm gonna hire uh, Tom Coughlin so he can make the decision, so I don't have to. And that seems like what he does. And I, I think he's a bad owner. Point blank, yeah. You know, I don't think he's a good owner. We look at the record since he's been here. Um, I don't know exactly what the number is, but I think they said his percentage is like 23% of the games or something like that uh, since he's on the team. And, man, he's he's just a horrible owner. He doesn't care. There's no way he can convince me that he cares. You, The fans are putting clown emojis over, over the um, avatars on Twitter and Facebook and everything because they're just so upset, man, because it's a clown show. Downtown at the stadium, that's, you might as well put a Big Ten over it because it's a fucking circus. It's a clown show, man. Like you got a clown as an owner who can care less about trying to make the team better, trying to make the fan base get excited. Yeah, he kept the team in Jacksonville, but what's the point? What's the point of keeping the team in Jacksonville if they're going to be the laughing stock in the NFL? They're not going to be good. I mean, we're going to go back to what the early two thousands when we're going to have blacked out games. They got to put tarps over the seats. People aren't going to the game. You got Win Dixie trying to give people tickets. You spend seventy five dollars on groceries. We gonna give you tickets that people still aren't gonna go. Like, are we trying to go back there all because he can make a dollar off owning the team, or are we really trying to make the team? You know what I'm saying? Make Jacksonville something by having a good NFL franchise team. And I, I honestly think he don't care. Point blank period. I don't think he cares. Um, more than likely, we're gonna have the number one draft pick this year. Number one or number two, it depends what Detroit does. But we're the worst team in the league, man. I don't. When Detroit was when Detroit was over, when they didn't have they were they didn't have no wins. They still was a better team than Jacksonville. Point blank, period. It was a better team than Jacksonville. If you listen, how you listen to Dan Campbell, their head coach, when he speaks, and you listen to when Urban Meyer spoke, one of those coaches sounded like they knew what they were doing. They just were just down on their luck at the time, and something was going to happen eventually. One of, one of the coaches sounded like he didn't know what the fuck was going on. And that was Irving. Dan Campbell shows, I mean, just in the press conference, Dan Campbell looks like a 
coach that the players actually want to play for. Urban just looks like the guy that they hired, and he's just our coach. They can care less about playing for him, any of that. And um, he just he wasn't a good fit for the Jackson for the Jaguars. Khan was obsessed, and that was hit. He was obsessed with trying with hiring Urban. As soon as they let go Marone, Urban was the was the hire. All, all those other interviews was bullshit. They was just to get those out the way, the preliminary shit out the way, because they knew they were gonna hire Urban. Khan was so obsessed with Urban, and he hired him, and look what happened. So we're back to rebuilding. Back to rebuilding, man. We've been rebuilding for the last since Blaine Gabbert, honestly. Since we drafted Blaine Gabbert, that was the start of the rebuild. And we've been rebuilding ever since. So uh next week we got the Colts. And I don't I don't see no I don't see no, nothing changing. I don't see nothing no 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 difference in how we've been playing the last few uh few weeks. Honestly, how we played Sunday, I feel like we're gonna get worse. Um Trevor's regressed. He's not throwing touchdowns. He's throwing interceptions. He threw one touchdown last game. I think he had like nine games where he hasn't thrown a touchdown. He's he's uh, he's what's the word? Digress, regress. He's he's looking worse than what he did when in the beginning of the season. And I put all that all that on uh, put all that on um, Urban. I put all that on offensive coordinator. I put all and all that falls up under Shot Khan because you're not hiring the people to give us a winning product. You're not hiring the people to get this number one draft pick for him to be as for him to be great and for him to be as good as we expect him to be. So I put all that on him. Um hopefully we don't break this boy. Um hopefully next year we can find some pieces, hire a coach, find some pieces and make it look like something. But he's the worst rookie quarterback. He's the worst first pick quarterback ever. Like literally his numbers is the worst out of all the first run, the first picks of the draft, he's the worst out of all of them. So, um, hopefully next week he can throw a touchdown or two, and no interceptions, and kind of we can build off that going into the off season, man. I don't know. Y'all, let me know what y'all uh, y'all thoughts. Um, hopefully I don't go this long without making another video, but I just I just wasn't feeling it. Point blank, period. Uh, but that's that for this one.